Hello everyone. So in the last couple of days we've uh, done a lab, a pivot, with the dry ice puck on the ramp uh, in which we measured the position of the puck after it had gone down the hill four different times. And hopefully you got a graph that looks much like this one, right? A top opening parabola as a position time graph. Right? And I just put the little line connectors in there to help us see the shape a little bit better than with just the points. We learned that we to linearize that, we had to square the time. So we got position was proportional to time squared. Right? Different than in our constant velocity unit where position and time were proportional. So in this unit, the special kind of motion that we were looking at is always motion that results in position being proportional to time squared. It's a hallmark of this special kind of motion. And we're still a, a day or so away from being able to actually name um, this kind of motion and get the name for our unit. In the last video you watched, I kind of showed you a way to go about seeing the velocity on a graph like this that is not just a straight line, but a curve. Right? We originally defined the velocity uh, graphically to be the slope of a position time graph. Okay, but in yesterday's movie, we said, well, what if we wanted to find the velocity at some particular time, like let's say at 0.4 seconds, right? So right here, right? just to show you, right? Right about there, okay? Now, the problem is, is that we don't have a straight line, right? So in yesterday's uh, discussion, you took a point, say, up here. You drew a chord through those points. That chord represented the average velocity. And then to make your average better, you kept moving the points closer and closer and closer and closer together until you ended up with the instantaneous velocity, which we defined as the slope of the tangent line at a particular time, right, on a position time graph. Okay, now, if it's a constant velocity, the slope stays the same all the time, right? We don't have to worry about it. But in cases of... Uh, changing velocities like this, I mean, we need slopes of tangent lines at that particular point. Now, I would like to generate, then, some velocity data from your position time data from your lab so that we could maybe examine whether there was a relationship between the velocity of your dry ice puck and the time. Is there some predictable pattern that we could see? Hence, what we are going to call a lab extension it's called a lab extension because we're not going to actually take new data. Okay? We are going to create the new data from our old data. Right? So we're building off the previous lab. So we're extending the lab, if you will. The purpose for the lab extension is right here, to create graphical and mathematical representations of the relationship between the velocity and the time for a dry ice puck on a ramp. So velocity and time is what we're going to do here. And you might want to uh, print off the lab sheet or lab extension sheet for this, which is, of course, on the schedule doc. But the question then is, well, how are we going to find those velocities, those slopes of tangent lines? I mean, we could, like, print out the graph and take a ruler and try to draw a tangent line at each point and figure out the slope of that tangent line, but that's not going to be very exact, okay? Okay. We could do the limiting process we talked about yesterday, right, with the second point up here and then making the points closer and closer and closer together, basically shrinking the time interval down to zero. But that's really calculus, and we don't want to do calc. So I'm going to show you a way to figure out the velocities from this graph that really is only going to work for this particular kind of motion. Okay, if the motion is any more complex than position proportional to time squared, if it's any other function of time, this method won't work. Okay, but it works for this method, which is why I'm going to show it to you now. Okay, we really don't get into more complex motions anyway until APC. So, let's draw a chord from our first point up here to the, uh, I think it's the ninth point. And the reason why I'm doing it there is notice now this point is in the center, right? There's one, two, three, four points on this side of that point. And there's one, two, three, four points on that side. The slope of this chord, rise over run on a graph of position versus time, is of course the average velocity, right? So this is just the average velocity, right, from here to here. But my question is, is that related at all to the velocity here. Some of you might already see it. Well, let's draw a chord instead of through 
this point and this point. Let's draw the next chord in through this point and this point, three points to either side. What do you notice? That chord is parallel to this one. All right, so there's an, a different average velocity. Now let's draw a chord from two points to the left and two points to the right. Again, parallel means the same slope, right? The same average velocity right, as that one. Let's do that one more time right, and go down to one point to either side. And now I hope you can kind of see that this chord is coming pretty close to actually matching the graph. It's not perfect, but it's coming close. Well, let's then draw the tangent line at this point. And what do you notice about that tangent line? It's the same slope. Do you see that, folks? It's the exact same slope. So if we go equidistant, equal, equal number of points on each side of the point we want, okay, the velocity of the point at that point is the average velocity. It's, if you will, the middle velocity. All right? um, this is something in calculus they call the mean value theorem. All right, if you take some calc, you'll learn about that. But we don't really need that calculus idea because I can show you how to do this kind of process. Say, go one step back. I can show you how to find this slope from one point on either side of the point you want. And if we find that slope, that'll be the velocity at that point. That'll be the slope of the tangent line. With me? Okay, so let me show you how to do this. Now, you may want to, uh, oh, well, yeah, I've got two things up here. This is the um, graph, graphical analysis of the position versus time, right, from the uh, lab. I've kind of made it half the screen so that we can see it and everything. Um, here's the data. This is data that uh, I got from the pivot. Okay, so hopefully fairly close to the kind of thing you got. This is a document called Creating a Velocity Time Graph, which is, of course, on your schedule sheet, which is going to show you all the steps we're going to do to find the velocities, okay, at each time along the way so that we can make a graph of velocity versus time. So, if you want to try to read both of these, I'm going to kind of follow the steps here, okay? So the first step is to basically create this graph again. If you saved it when doing the lab, you can just open it up. If not, you can remake it, right? Put the points in, change the column headings, all that good stuff. Now, next point says to click on the column options button. That's the little sideways snowman. And go to add manual column. This is going to be for our new column of velocity. If position is in centimeters and time is in seconds, then the velocity will be in centimeters per second. Right, let's put that both in, apply, and you'll notice we have right, a velocity column now that we can type data into. Now, next bullet point says, hey, well, what was the velocity of the dry ice puck when you started the timer. Hopefully you started the timer right on the frame where the wire got cut. All right, so in that case, it makes sense that at zero time, the velocity was just zero velocity. So go ahead and put that in there, right, for the first point. Should have a good zero velocity point. We didn't start the timer after it was already moving. We started it as it began to move. So that gets us down here. Now, Here's where we're going to do the thing that I was just showing you, okay? You're going to go to Graph Tools, which is this button down here. So, see, it says Graph Tools. Click. Apply Curve Fit. I want a linear fit. Now, this does a linear fit of the entire set of data. And, of course, it's not a very good fit, right, because it's not a linear graph. But if you go to the edge, see how when you go to the edge, it goes from a, a, a plus to two lines with arrows. See that looks kind of like this. See that thing right here that I put in there, right? You go over here, you can click there and drag and it changes the points over which the linear fit is being done. See that? It's changing the numbers along the way. Well, I'm gonna go all the way over to the third point. 
Now, do you notice that our linear fit runs one point to this side and one point to this side of our 0.1 second position? So the slope of this line is the same, the a is the average velocity, but that is the middle velocity, if you will, the mean velocity, the velocity at 0.1 seconds. So we can take this number here, the slope, 35, right? And we can put it right in here for our velocity at 0.1 seconds. Let's see again the velocities, right? That's 0.1 second velocity. So now I've done 0.1. Well, what if I want to do, and that's, you know, showing you this here, okay? And explaining what I just did. So you can look at that sheet as you go. Now, if I want the velocity at 0.2 seconds, well, I'm going to grab this side and move it over one. And then I'm going to grab the left-hand side and move it over one. Do you see now how we only have three points in here, right? And again, the line goes through the, the first and third point, and therefore the slope of that line is the average slope, which is the slope at the middle velocity, or the middle time, which is 0.2 seconds. So now it's 70. Mm, looks like a pattern. And now we just gotta keep doing this, right? So we can, um, you know, go to the next point, move this, move this, right? Take the slope, move this, move this, and just keep doing this all the way up. Now, uh, when you look at your lab sheet, by the way, you will notice that you can't get the last point. So we can get the second to last point. This is 0.8 seconds, right? But I can't get to the right of 0.9 seconds. So we're just going to have to leave that one blank. Okay, so this last point here, uh, on your lab sheet, your lab extension sheet, I actually put little hash marks in there so you can't fill it in. But we should be able to get data for all of these points. Okay, once you do that, then follow the rest of the steps here. It's going to tell you, well, now let's change the graph to a velocity versus time graph. And then you're going to do a linear fit on it. And away you'll go on the rest of the lab sheet. Again, remember this sheet has got very detailed instructions right, to follow through if that was a little fast for you. Or you can rewind and watch that part of the movie again to see how I started taking data. Okay, I'm not going to go through the rest of it, but you should be able to do all of your points and put your numbers in. Don't worry about my numbers, right? Get numbers off of your original data, okay? If your data was good enough to, you know, work when you put it into the Google form, then it should be good enough for you to find the velocities and have everything work out. All right, so get that all done. Get the lab sheet done and then come back for the post-lab extension.